solar manufacturing worldwide is on track to meet the 2050 goals of net zero carbon emissions, while other technologies in the marketplace lag behind. Rising electric rates have pushed many states past this magic threshold that makes solar much more attractive and economically available to them. And Ohio will see its first floating solar array coming soon in 2024. I'm Jay Warmke with Blue Rock Station, and this is the news from the solar industry for the week of October 29th. So a recent study by the International Energy Agency has found that solar is actually well ahead uh, on track to become uh, to have enough manufacturing facilities in place by 2030 to meet the 2050 goals of zero carbon emissions. Uh, there are other technologies that are not doing so well or as well. Solar is at about 130% of the capacity necessary uh, to meet these goals. Battery or storage manufacturing is right at around 93%. Hydrogen electrolyzers, uh, people are talking about getting into hydrogen, 81%. While wind turbine technology and heat pumps lag behind in the amount of needed manufacturing capacity to meet these goals. Speaking of component production, uh, a large amount of solar projects have been announced domestically recently due to incentives in the Inflation Reduction Act. Uh, this includes this week an announcement of an $800 million facility uh, from Canadian Solar that's going to be located in Jeffersonville, Indiana. Hopes to have that open by early 2025 and it should employ about 1,200 people. But inverter manufacturing is also growing within the US. A lot of announcements in that particular field. For instance, Siemens announced that they're gonna have a utility scale um, inverter manufacturing facility in Wisconsin. Then there's Enphase is opening up three different manufacturing facilities, one in South Carolina, one in Texas, and another one up in Wisconsin, big place for inverters. Selectria, uh, they're opening up a facility in Illinois. Um, Power Electronics, opening a plant to make inverters in Texas. And Fronius has announced they're opening up or expanding their facility in Indiana. Uh, for those who are within the industry, there's this magic threshold. Uh, typically, if electric rates are above 15 cents per kilowatt hour, then it can be economical and pretty easy to sell solar systems to residential customers. Well, for the first time, the average electric rates here in the United States have pushed past 15 cents per kilowatt hour. They're up to about 15.1 cents. Um, for example, only about 5% of the homes in the United States have solar installed. A lot of homes, but still a very small percentage. And that's because traditionally electric rates in the U.S. have been relatively low. Uh, other countries, for instance, Germany, uh, where electric rates are over 40 cents a kilowatt hour, they have about a 20% penetration. And even Australia, uh, which rates are a little bit higher than the US, about 18 cents per kilowatt hour, um, they have about a 30% marketplace penetration. So for the first time now, as I mentioned, uh, utility rates on average in the US are over 15 cents. There are 16 states in the country that have higher than that. Um, the highest in the nation is Hawaii, with an average 43 cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, electric rates have been rising pretty rapidly. From 2021 through 2022, we saw about 11 percent price rise. 2022 to 2023, saw a 13 price rise. Um, a lot of the electric companies, for example, AEP, says that the reason for these rate increases uh, include global demand increasing, the global supply chains being disrupted, economic uncertainty, continued war in Ukraine. Uh, they're saying all of this is just making it more expensive to produce electricity, although it might have something to do with the fact that AEP's profits went up 11% um, from 2021 through 2022 to about $12.5 billion. And I just wonder if the fact that the CEO, uh, Nicholas Ekins, is 
paid over $16 million a year um, in salary and bonuses. And that's all not too bad for a fully regulated company. And over the past decade or so, the solar industry has seen steady and dramatic price decreases. But in the last couple of years, we've seen the prices tick up just a wee bit, uh, largely due to, again, supply chain disruptions and tariffs on imported solar panels. Um, but recent data have shown that the prices seem to be stabilizing, even ticking down just a bit. Residential prices fell over 15% in the last year um, from $3.18 per watt installed to about $2.68 per watt. While utility scale prices did um, rise just a little bit from about $1.07 per watt to $1.16 per watt. While the module prices keep going down, we are seeing increases in what they call the balance of systems, which is the wire, the conduit, uh, the metal that goes into the project. Those are all going up. And Ohio is going to see its first floating solar array. Uh, D3 Energy is partnering with Delco Water Utility. Delco is there in Delaware, Ohio, which is just north of Columbus, Ohio. They're looking to install a 3.2 megawatt solar array. It'll be floating on a cooling pond at that facility. Expected to be completed in mid-2024 and will provide about 50% of the electrical needs for that utility. And that is the news from the solar industry for this week. We'll see you next week.